Hey, I'm done with work, sweetheart. I'm heading home, but stuck in traffic right now. Hey, Tom. Long day at work, huh? You must be tired. Just don't fall asleep at the wheel, okay? I can't wait to see you. Oh yeah, I made your favorite steak dinner. There's a feast waiting for you here. No way. You're the best. You know how much I love your steak dinners. You don't even have that big of an appetite usually. But man, every time I make steak, you just devour it. That's how good it is. I can't get enough. Seriously. If only you'd do the same for my other meals. <laughs> I know you don't really like to eat your vegetables, but I'm always trying all these new recipes in an attempt to help you eat healthier. It's a lot of hard work, you know. Ugh, vegetables, huh? Yeah, nope. Never liked them and never will. It doesn't matter, hun. Don't you want to live a long and healthy life? You have to eat them every day. On that note, what about your health check results? You told me you had to get another checkup, right? Please stop procrastinating and take a day off of work to get that checkup, okay? Oh, shoot. It's just that I forgot. I've been a bit preoccupied with work. You're right. I promise I'll make an appointment soon. Good. I'm really worried about you, so don't take too long. Just get it over with as soon as possible. Well, I gotta go check on the food. And maybe make a salad, too. I know how much you love salad. Ugh. You don't have to make salad, do you? It's just a lot of work anyways. Let's just stick with the steaks. <laughs> oh, you'll eat your salad, sweetie. That is, if you want your steak. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll eat the dang salad. I'm gonna try to get home quickly, so see you later. I can't believe you. How could you cancel on me the day of our wedding anniversary? That's literally the worst thing you could do to me. I'm really upset. I was looking forward to it for a really long time. Does our anniversary mean nothing to you? There's nothing I can do. It's work. It's not like I can control the circumstances to work in my favor. You should know this already. Yes, I know you can't do anything about having to work, but still. Try to understand how I feel, please. Can't you just come to the hotel now? It's not too late. We reserved such a nice room. Even though we can't eat the full course meal we ordered anymore. I don't want to spend the night here alone. Please come see me. I still have work to do. I don't know what to say. I'm really sorry. But you were able to get the morning off tomorrow, right? Please tell me I'll at least get to see you after you're finished. Sorry. I really don't know when I'm going to be finished. I could be working until the early morning and need all the sleep I can get after. Who knows if I'll get called into work again. It's been happening a lot lately. It's our anniversary! Does that really not mean anything to you? You're just going to leave me alone like this? I'm not even asking for hours of your time. I just wanted to see you for a bit. Like I said, there's nothing I can do if it's work. Stop making me repeat myself. You're being really selfish right now. Think about my position here. You know I wouldn't complain any other day of the year. I think it's completely understandable that I'm upset. You've been acting really weird lately. All of a sudden, I feel like you're avoiding me and treating me coldly whenever we talk. What is going on? Can we please talk it through? It's all your fault. I've been feeling overwhelmed by your demands. I'm frankly tired and have been needing more time away from you. It's just an anniversary. No need to overreact. Please just give me a break. Just an anniversary? Are you serious? You would have never said such things before. You always went out of your way to treat me well and make me happy. You don't even eat what I cook anymore. Heck, you don't even tell me that you're coming home anymore like you used to. You would always text me to check up on me. I'm busy. There's a lot to do at work right now. Just try to understand. I can't talk anymore. I'm going back to work. We'll just talk again when we both have time. Wait, don't leave yet. You need to first promise me a day that we'll meet to talk. And you need to keep your word this time. Fine. I'm serious. You better not cancel on me again. If you break your promise one more time, I'm going to really give it to you. I won't be understanding. Hi, Tom. Are you going to be working until late today, too? Should I just eat on my own instead of waiting for you? Do whatever you want. You don't have to cook for me. I'll just eat something on the way home, so just worry about yourself. Stop asking me every time. It's getting annoying. 
We made a promise to eat dinner together as much as possible. Of course I'm going to ask you. I always do. What's the problem? You know what? I should have told you sooner, but it's just tiring at this point. Tiring? Why would you say that? You don't have to keep wasting your time cooking for me and waiting around until I get home. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Why don't you use your time for something better? You're acting really suspicious lately. Why haven't you been coming home? Things are getting really weird between us. I want to understand you, but I can't if you don't explain yourself. Is there something that I did that bothered you? You know you can tell me anything. We need to communicate. That's exactly what's tiring me out. You always want to communicate. Just stop already. You're being a pain. A pain? Is that what you think of me? How could you say something so mean to your own wife? You know, I'm here all worried about you because I care about you. Do you think I can just ignore everything that has been going on? Yeah, I think you can. Just leave me alone, all right? You worrying has nothing to do with me. I bring in enough money for you to have a good life, so you shouldn't have anything else to complain about. I'm out here sacrificing my time and energy for you. Please don't tell me you're unsatisfied. There's literally nothing to complain about here. There's nothing to be satisfied about here! Nothing! It's ridiculous that you could even say I have nothing to complain about. Just the fact that you never text me anymore. The way that you've been treating me. Your overall attitude. Everything has changed 180 degrees from before. You used to always eat my steak dinners and now you don't even touch it. What a waste of food. We were supposed to talk things out after you cancelled on me the day of our anniversary, and yet you kept postponing it. Everything, from the words you spew to the actions you've been talking, all of it has been just utterly insensitive. It's like you don't love me anymore. Please tell me what's going on with you. I can't take this anymore. Fine. To tell you the honest truth, I want a divorce. As soon as possible. No. No way. Are you kidding me? Just like that. Out of the blue? With no explanation? I don't see any point in us staying together anymore. It's not like you're satisfied with me anyways. It's a win-win for both of us. Just do me a favor and sign the papers. I'll give them to you soon. Gotta go. You think I'm just gonna agree to a divorce when you haven't even explained anything? This is all too one-sided. Don't just decide everything on your own. We need to sit down and talk about this. If we keep this up, our relationship will just get worse and worse. It's obvious that we both aren't feeling it anymore. There's no use in forcing it. It's better to just get the divorce over with as soon as possible. We're still both in our 20s, with no kids. Getting divorced won't be as easy the older we get. Sandy, you'll be happier if you get divorced while you're still young and start finding someone new to spend your life with. I seriously don't even have the words. Do you really mean all of that? Is that what you want? I wouldn't be saying it if it wasn't what I wanted. You do know that it's not easy to get a divorce, right? It's going to be a long and painful process. I thought marriage was something that takes work. It's not just about enjoying the good times. It's about putting in the work to talk things out when the going gets rough. The only way our trust and intimacy will grow is by communicating our feelings and being honest with each other. I just wish you shared the same sentiments. You see? That's exactly what I'm sick and tired of. I don't need to waste my time with this. You can go find someone else to share your feelings with. Oh, Tom. What happened to us? What really happened? Please talk to me. I can't bear the thought of us ending like this. We've been together for five years now. You can't trust me enough to tell me what's going on. It's so obvious to me that something's been up with you. I can just tell something has been on your mind. If you're gonna keep going with this, I might as well tell you everything. Yes, please do. I'm all ears. I fell in love with someone else, so I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't love you like I did before. You're lying. This can't be true. I know this is a lot to take in, but it's the truth. It's not like I was cheating on you, but I did fall in love with another girl. So I don't think it's right for me to stay with you under these circumstances. Don't worry, I'll make sure to pay you consolation money for the divorce. You didn't cheat on me? So you mean it's one-sided? Yes. Unrequited. I didn't act on my feelings. So don't do anything stupid like stalking the girl. 
She didn't do anything wrong. If you really can't handle the fact that I've fallen in love with someone else, I'll even give you double the consolation money. That's how much I want to get a divorce. I'm willing to pay anything to get out of our marriage. This isn't an issue about the money. That's the last thing on my mind. That's the only way I know how to make it all up to you. There's nothing else I can do to make you feel better. What a bunch of bull. Unbelievable. You know what? You really don't deserve to be with me anyways. I should have known better than to stay with someone like you. You know what? You're right. I have nothing to say against that. All you can think about is yourself. You really don't care about me or how I feel at all. That's not the point. There's nothing I can do about the fact that I don't love you anymore. I can't be with you and that's that. You have to give me credit for being honest with you before going off and cheating. Because that's something I could have really done. In fact, the temptation was there. Please at least consider that I thought about you before doing something that stupid. I was brave enough to come clean about my feelings. I need time to process. I can't decide anything right now. This is too much to take in at once. I don't want to get a divorce. That's all I can say right now. That's where I stand. Even if that's the way you feel, I don't feel the same back. You still want to stay with me while I have feelings for another person? I know that. I get it already, okay? But I still need time to think. Don't expect me to just be fine with everything on the spot. That's just asking too much. Okay, I understand what you're saying. But please don't keep me waiting too long. I need an answer as soon as possible. Okay, I promise not to tell my parents about what's going on until I process my feelings about the issue and come to my decision. One more thing. I need to talk to you about this in person before deciding anything about the divorce. Then... I'll be able to properly think about my stance on the issue. I don't have any intention of deciding things through just this one conversation over text. If we can't talk things through properly, don't expect me to agree to this divorce. This is a big deal, so I need you to cooperate with me here. All right then. I'll make sure to go to the house in the next few days. Thanks. I need to know everything. About how you feel and what you're thinking. Please tell me everything when I see you without holding back. Sandy, did you sign the divorce papers? I want to move out already and make it official. If you're done processing everything, I'd like to start the preparations to leave the house. After thinking about it, I don't think I can agree to this. What are you trying to say now? It's too late for that. We talked things through the other day and came to the decision to get the divorce. You agreed already. You can't take it back now. Talk things through? We definitely did not talk things through. I hadn't even agreed to anything and you just handed me the papers as if everything was decided. I just gave up at the time because I thought it wouldn't have mattered what I said. That doesn't mean I actually made up my mind. After having some time to myself, I knew I didn't want to get a divorce. I can't agree to it. I just can't. I don't get it. I keep telling you I want a divorce. That I don't love you anymore. What's the point of being together if there's no love? We would only be married on paper. You would be miserable. There's no way you could be happy married to me under these circumstances. I don't understand what is going through your mind. I still want to live with you, Tom. I can't let go of you. How many times do I have to tell you it's not possible? There's no other option here. Don't give up now. There's still a chance for us. Right? We can still be together, right? I don't know what you're trying to imply here. I looked over the divorce papers after you left. When I was reading the fine print, I happened to stumble upon a little piece of information. Did you know that if we got divorced, I would get everything that was ours? All the joint funds, the things we bought together. Well, I didn't actually cheat on you, but I was in the wrong and I should be the one to compensate you. That's why I'm paying you the consolation money. It's enough to cover everything. It's enough? It's more than enough. In fact, it's way more than someone should get only two years into a marriage. I had a gut feeling that something was off, so I had to investigate it. So it's cancer, huh? I heard you've been going to the hospital to get treatments. I don't know what you're talking about. That has nothing to do with our divorce. Let's get back to the topic. This has everything to do with the divorce. This has got to be the reason why you've been so adamant about leaving me. Just tell me the truth already. The fact that you would go this far means it's pretty bad, right? Why else would you demand a divorce? 
Although I was able to find out about your condition, I couldn't get information about what stage of cancer it was. It doesn't matter. You don't need to know. We're going to get a divorce and we'll be strangers again. There's no reason for me to tell you anything further. We are still married. You are still my husband. It matters. As your wife, I have a right to know your situation. Don't think I'm going to leave you now that I know you're sick. I'm not going to let you go through this all alone. Just give up already. Please, let's just get divorced as previously discussed. I said no! There's nothing you can do to make me leave you. Even if you disagree with me. Heck, even if you turn in the divorce papers behind my back. I'm going to stay by your side, no matter what. You might not like it, and I might be bothering you, but I've made up my mind. You might be thinking you're a hero from some tearjerker movie or something, trying to make me leave you for my sake. But I don't like what you're doing here. You wouldn't be bothering me. I wouldn't? I'm sorry. I know I hurt you a lot. I demanded a divorce so many times and said a lot of heartless things to you. I'm sorry. You must have felt so terrible. I just want you to understand one thing, though. I just don't want to get you involved in something like this. I don't want you to have to stick around with a guy with no future. That's just how you feel. What about how I feel? Is that not important? You can't just decide everything on your own like that. I deserve to have a say in this matter. They're already saying I don't even have a year left to live. Just half a year or so. There might be a small chance that I get better, but only through surgery. I'm already in stage three or four. The cancer spread all over. There's barely any chance left for me to survive. I'm hopeless. Even so, I want to stay with you no matter what happens. I can't just leave you alone like this. You must have been so scared this whole time. It's been really painful for you, I imagine. I don't want you to have to go through all of that alone. I know I can't understand everything you are going through, but I want to do everything I can to support you through this. You don't have to deal with this by yourself. So please don't try to kick yourself into thinking you're being noble by divorcing me and sending me away. I want to stay with you. That's what I want. Why can't you just understand? This just isn't going to end well. You shouldn't waste your time. Even if by some miracle I did get better, the chance of me getting cancer again is still high. Is that what you want to put yourself through? It's more than likely that I'll be gone within the year. You're still healthy and young. There's no need for you to stick around when there's no hope for me. Please, just live your life. I don't want to drag you down with me. You're so beautiful and kind. There's so many guys who would fight over you. They would all make you happier than I could. I just want you to be happy. There's no way you could be happy staying with me. No. I'm the happiest with you. I don't want to be with anyone else. There's no one who could make me happier than you could. I couldn't even think about being with someone else for even one second. You're the only one for me. Sandy. Still, I just... Even if you can't work anymore, I'll just work more instead and support you. I don't mind at all. Just thinking about the fact that I can't be with you right now is making me miserable. I'd be much happier being by your side and supporting you any way I can. If you want me to be happy, you'd let me stay with you. Besides, there's so many people who have lived longer than the doctors said they would. Don't just give up like that. We need to fight this together. We can get through this. And don't you dare give up on me. I won't give up on you. Sandy, just stop. Let's not continue this any further. No, there's nothing you can say to stop me now. Please, stop saying things like that. The more you keep saying stuff like that, the more I feel like I want to live. I don't want to feel that way more than I do now. I've finally gotten to a point where I could kind of accept my fate. I don't want to feel hopeful when things could get worse any minute. Tom, it's okay to be hopeful. I want you to want to live. I really want you to honor that desire. It's better than just giving up without even trying when there's still a chance to overcome this. There's nothing wrong with wanting to live. Why are you avoiding feeling this way? You told me you wanted kids as soon as possible, right? If you stick with me while I'm sick, you probably won't be able to have kids. I don't really have to think about that right now. I'll worry about that when the time comes. You are more important than anything else. You are my first priority. Always. 
You might really regret it if you choose to stay with me. Are you okay with that? I know I won't regret it. I've never regretted a single moment I've spent with you. I promise you, leaving you right now will be the thing I regret. In fact, I'll probably regret it for the rest of my life. Sandy, thank you. Thank you so much. There's no words that can explain how grateful I am for you. And I'm so sorry for hurting you so much. I feel terrible for how I treated you, even though I didn't mean a single word I said. Well, don't be mistaken. I am still quite upset about everything. Even though we are married for crying out loud, you hid such an important thing from me. We are supposed to be able to trust each other enough to share these things. And then you just hit me out of nowhere with divorce and whatnot. You might have thought it was all for me, but honestly, it was pretty selfish of you. Yeah, I know. From now on, I'm going with you to all your hospital visits. I also want to make sure I understand your illness and study what I can. I want to do absolutely everything I can to make sure I can support you to the best of my ability. Okay, I understand. I think it'll be really tough being with me during this time. But honestly, I'm so glad I'll have you with me. Don't worry about it. I'm glad we're going to be in this together. I'll always be here, by your side, through thick and thin. For now, since you don't have to avoid me anymore, just come home early today, okay? I would really like to see you and have a meal together. It's been such a long time. Sure, let's do that. Sandy, I can't thank you enough. I don't know what I did to deserve you. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do everything I can to get better. I really want to live. Oh, Tom. We are going to get through this, okay? We'll fight together so you can live a long life. You won't be alone anymore. Whenever you need it, and when the going gets tough, I promise I'll be right there with you. It'll be okay. Hey! How are you feeling? How's everything at the hospital? I'm done with work now, so I'm heading over. Is there anything you want? I can stop by the store for you on the way. Uh, maybe some seasoning mixer or something like that? I think my sense of taste is changing to the point that I can't really eat anything unless it has a strong flavor. Got it. I'll stop by the supermarket on the way. Thank you. I'm feeling alright. It's not too bad. It's just the surgery wounds. They hurt quite a bit. It's only been a few days, so I'm sure it's pretty painful. How's the chemotherapy going? I felt really nauseous yesterday, but I'm feeling a bit better now. I was able to eat my meals today, too. I see. I'm glad you're feeling better. Hang in there. With all the intense side effects, I really hope all the treatments and medicine are working. I know. I really hope so, too. Although we can't really know anything at this point. But your surgery was pretty successful, no? We were able to remove most of the cancer, so the doctor said you'll get to live longer than expected. If we just work on the rest of the cancer with medication and radiation therapy, I'm sure everything will work out in your favor. You got this. Things are going great. Easier said than done. <laughs> well, it is true that you've extended your life expectancy. That's already a miracle in and of itself. Thank you so much for not giving up and giving it your all, even when it must be painful and exhausting for you. You're definitely a warrior. You've been fighting really hard. It's all because of you, Sandy. I wouldn't have been able to get this far without you. Also, we'll have to wait and see how things progress over time, like the doctors said. They also told us that surgery won't guarantee my recovery. I was really scared, honestly. There was so much risk involved for something that I wasn't even sure would help at all. What if they had told me that there was no hope left for me after the surgery was finished? Yeah, I completely understand. That must have been really scary to think about. You're going through a lot right now, Tom. I see you. You've been really brave. I know now that if you weren't here with me, I would have already given up. It would have been too much for me to handle. I'm so, so glad I didn't divorce you. <laughs> I don't even want to think about what would be happening right now if you hadn't found out the truth. I know, right? Don't ever do something so stupid ever again. I'm sure you learned your lesson, right? I really thought I was just waiting for the day my life would end without any hope of getting better. I didn't think things would actually get better. Or at least, I have hope that I'll be alright. Right now, I'm so happy. Even under these circumstances. With someone I love so much next to me, I feel like I'm truly living. It doesn't matter if I'm sick. It feels so great to be alive. 
Although I know I'm not completely healed and there's still so much to be done. I feel sorry because I'm sure it'll continue to be hard for you too. I'm just happy that you are still here with me. That's all that matters. You don't have to worry about me at all. And you don't have to feel sorry. Just focus on getting better. Oh yeah, once you get discharged and you're feeling okay, we should do a do-over for our wedding anniversary. It can be like a celebration for your successful surgery as well. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll get our minds off of everything and just make some good memories. Oh, yeah. I did promise you I'd make up for canceling. So it's decided then. It's a bit late, but we're definitely going to go through with it this time, all right? <laughs> and next year's anniversary will happen as planned. Canceling on the day is no longer allowed. Your wish shall be my command. Oh, Sandy, thank you so much. Sandy, you are the reason that I am here right now, alive and happy. I am so beyond grateful to have you in my life. Tom, I'm the one who wants to thank you for everything. You've made me the happiest girl in the world. Let's live happily together for a very long time. After everything that happened, I continued to go in and out of the hospital, and in the blink of an eye, two years have passed since the cancer was first found. Miraculously, I am still alive and doing somewhat well. Going to work in my condition is practically impossible, so now I am working from home while going to the hospital for my treatments regularly. To avoid a relapse, I am also continuing my chemotherapy. I had been living a plain old regular life, just like anyone else, when all of a sudden, I was told I only have half a year left to live. I was so shocked and utterly miserable for a while that I literally couldn't move, let alone talk to anyone about what I was going through. I really did think about telling Sandy about my situation, being my wife and all. I knew just by imagination alone how hard it would be to recover after someone you love so much passes away. Even if time healed the wound of loss to a certain extent, I know that the grief would stick around going as far as to disturb that person's ability to go on living a normal life like before. When I thought about Sandy having to go through that alone after I passed away, I thought it would be better to just be known as that one unbelievable jerk who treated her terribly. That way, she could have an easier time forgetting about me. Losing someone who didn't cherish you would be easier to overcome than losing someone you love forever to a terminal illness. That was my logic. In the end, I guess that was just a selfish move on my part. When I think about it now, if Sandy did the same thing to me, I think I really wouldn't have been able to get over it. I still feel really guilty about the fact that I only thought about myself instead of truly considering Sandy's feelings about the situation. I really want to make it up to her for as long as I live. I can't move about the way I would like to, and I can't say that I'm even close to being physically back to normal but I know that I'll keep Sandy close and really cherish her presence every single day. I want to treasure every moment that we have together. I love her more than anything in this world, and I'll do everything in my power to live a long life, to make sure I don't ever do anything to make her sad again. <laughs>